doesn't pay to get out of bed. This was one of those days when you have a distinct suspicion that someone has hung a quarantine sign on your door to scare business away. I just about hit bottom when the monotony was suddenly broken. You busy, Mr. Hammer? Sure. Joe, I don't see how you could break your way through the crowds clamoring to get in. Come on in. My name's Barton. Most folks call me Pop. Name mean anything to you? Nope. Well, maybe that's because your name isn't Barton. At least it wasn't when I knew you. It was Spencer. Farmer Spencer, con man extraordinaire. I knew I couldn't fool you. You're still sharp as a tack. That's what I was counting on. That's why I came to you. Yeah? Why? Because anybody smart enough to send old Farmer Spencer up the river is smart enough to turn to when you're in trouble. And I'm in trouble. <laughs> now, Farmer, I'd like to help you. The plain show to a con man is just a little outside of my line. I haven't roped a mark since I've been out, Mike. Oh, come on, Farmer. Word of honor. I've been strictly on the legit. Yeah? Doing what? Barton's Amusement Park, one of the best in Jersey. I picked it up when it was on its last legs. Now I've got it on its feet. Huh? So, where's the trouble? Oh, uh, here it is. Somebody recognized me as Farmer Spencer and wants $25,000 to keep quiet about it. Well, give him one red cent. If your operation's legitimate, go to the police. It might be refreshing for a change. Oh, it's not that easy, son. I had to have a license to operate the park. I figured it was easy if I forgot a few things. Now, if it comes out, I could be out of business just like that. Uh -huh. So some character with a long memory and a short conscience wants in. Huh? So what do you want me to do about it? If I do pay off, I want all sales to be final. Oh, come on, Pop, you know better than that. A shake is like getting olives out of a bottle. After the first one, boom, they come easy. I'm not thinking of myself alone. There are a couple of kids in this with me. They stand to lose everything if I fight and go down. Hmm. Do they know you've been inside? Well, they do now. After I got this letter, I figured they had a right to know what they were up against. Mm -hmm. What do they think? Doesn't make a mite of difference to them. They're just like my own family. I'm thinking of them as much as myself when I'm asking you to help me. It seemed like a simple enough job. Some former classmate of the old man's at the big house had spotted him and figured him for a soft touch. All I had to do was to find the classmate and discourage him. Simple as that. At least that's how it seemed. Pop Barton's setup was about an hour's drive from my office, roughly 20 miles the other side of the George Washington Bridge. You told me you own this joint. Well, I do, most of it anyway. Just like to keep my hand in, makes me feel useful. <laughs> hey, Barney, go find Hal Tilden. Tell him to meet us backstage at the girly pitch. Hal's wife, Sharon, she runs the girly show. Come on, I want you to meet them. They're the kids I was telling you about. Oh, yeah. The show begins immediately on the inside, so step right up and get your tickets to the biggest little show on the midway. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All right, girls, that's enough. Let's save a little for the inside. Okay, folks, get them while they last. They're going fast. Hey, Mike. Yeah, you're fine. Now, do you want to check in the register a sec? Come on, kids, hurry up. There goes the music. Climb up. Up. Oh, fine. Oh, Sharon. Wait in a second, Pop. Okay, kids, give them a good show. Whew. And this must be Mike. 
You know, Pops told me so much about you. I, I feel as if I already know you. Uh -huh. Sharon Tilden, Mike. She and Hal are my partners. Nice work. You can get it. Thank you. You know, Pops been awfully good to us, Mike. Loaned us money when we were stranded, and then he let us buy into the park. You know me better than that, Mike. I needed a fund for the operation. I let him buy in to keep him from taking any better offers. Sure, that's Pop for you. Oh, here's Hal now, Mike. He's been dying to meet you, too. Hi. Hi. Oh, this is a fellow I wanted you to meet, Hal. Mike Hammer. Glad you're here, Mike. We can use your help and your advice. What do you think we ought to do? Not we, Hal. This is my baby. No, no, Pop. Sharon and I are agreed. If you pay, we put up our share. If you fight, we're behind you 100%. What we want to know is what should we do? Well, I don't know. I'd like to have a little look around before I give an opinion. Sure. Have you hired any new people lately? No. No, no new help of any kind. All of them have been with us a long time, Mike. Even the roustabouts, you couldn't chase most of them. Yeah, nobody acting suspiciously, of course. No. Any ex-cons that you know of? No. Well, uh, you surely don't think anybody in the outfit would... Well, I don't think anything, Bob. I... Look out! Hey, Pop, how was that thing rigged? There's a line tied off outside. Now, let's go. The rope gave way. It couldn't. We replaced those every season. That was no accident. That rope was cut. Well, are you still willing to fight? We're with Pop all the way. Pop? Okay, I'll have a look around for myself. The behind-the-scenes area of a spread like this is a world of its own, where the people who make things tick out front come back for their fun and relaxation. Come on! Fever. Let's make that five. One time big five. That big 52, that 43, that 61. You gotta make a little seven there. They're in the wrong tent, mister. Oh, I thought I might get a lax in. This is a private game. Hey, wait a minute, Barney. Since when ain't we in the market for fresh money? We don't want no outsiders. Ah, uh, he's practically a relative. Move in, buddy. Okay, your point's five, Barney. Let's go. Make a five, I stay alive. The roustabout named Barney interested me for a very simple reason. When he got excited, he talked without moving his lips. There's only one place where you learn to do that. It's a place where guards frown on talking in the ranks. I got 20 of them. Get it up there, boys. You can't participate unless you're doing it. All right. Get it in. You're afraid it shoot. Come on, Dolly. Make it for Daddy. Seven! Hold it. What's the idea? I've got a right to see the dice. What do we look like, hayseeds? You've had it, Mac. SOS first thing the next morning. Whoever was behind the shake wasn't taking my interest in the case lying down. It could be it wasn't going to be quite so simple after all. Looks more like shredded wheat than hula skirts. They sure did a job. So what happens to the show now? It'll go on. Sharon's rehearsing the girls in a harem number. Yes, and that's not all. Here, yeah, read that. They're upping the ante to 50,000. So? I guess I made a mistake trying to buck them. Oh, Pop, that's nonsense. You just go on paying and paying, you know that. I mean, get out, turn the outfit over to the kids to run. And then what would you do with yourself? I don't know. You're not gonna do it, Pop. You belong here. You got a better idea? Not unless we pay off and hope they won't come back. That's pounding sand on a rat hole. Give me 24 hours. You got an idea? Yeah, I got an idea. Mm -hmm. Who? No, 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 I'll tell you when I can prove it. Prove what? Mike thinks he knows who's behind all no, this. No, I didn't say that exactly. We know two things about this guy. One, he knows his way around here. He's such a familiar figure that nobody pays any attention to him. Two, he knows that Pop was an ex-con. Yeah, but how can that help us? Well, I think I know the guy who fits both requirements. Well, how do you know he's been on the inside? He's got the big house habit. He talks without moving his lips. Uh, they call it Sing Sing Wireless. Well, you be careful you're right before you move. Yeah, oh, I will, Pop. 24 hours didn't give him much time to get fancy. My best bet lay in stampeding our letter-writing friend and then making another move. 
on me last night. Me ring them in, don't make me laugh. Now you get out of here before I cut you in two. You haven't got a dozen friends, you don't make a difference. You recognize Pop in the big house, didn't you? Didn't you? <laughs> huh? You never been in stir, huh? <laughs> All right. All right, so I was inside. That doesn't mean I can't go straight, does it? I don't have to stand still for no shakedown. What made you think you could get away with it? You're not smart enough to be a shake artist. What do you mean, shake artist? Don't play games with me. Don't give me the shakedown routine. I know who you are and I know why you're here. Is it so? Well, you just tell me about it, huh? Your name's Hammer. Private Eye. The old man hired you to get rid of me. Oh, is that so? That's so. When he found out I knew him from the past, he didn't want me around. So he hired you to get something on me so he could give me the bounce. Huh? So when you recognized him from the past, that's when you decided to come here and put the shake on him, yeah? No, no. I, I only figured out who he was a couple of weeks ago. And then you told him? No, but Al Tilden must have... He was working with me when I when I figured it. I, I guess it slipped out. Al Tilden. <laughs> I decided to go along with Barney's story. As he talked, I began to get the squirming of an idea. I had nothing to back it up, and I didn't like what it suggested. Unless they made a move, I was still out in left field. I spent most of the afternoon just poking around, picking up a little information here, a little there. The picture I'd started to build up was beginning to take shape. had to be notified. There'd have to be a coroner's inquest, but as the sheriff pointed out, that would merely be a formality. That is, unless I dug up enough evidence to persuade the coroner to change his verdict from accident to murder. Poor Sharon. What an awful thing to happen. Maybe it just didn't happen, Pop. <clears throat> what do you mean? It was an accident. Who'd do a thing like that? I don't know, but I know one thing. You haven't been leveling with me. Well, that's crazy. Why wouldn't I? You knew Barney was an ex-con. Yeah, I had to. If I could spot the big house habit, you knew about it a long time ago. All right, so I knew it. But who am I to hound a man because he's been on the inside? Oh, Pop, Pop, didn't it ever occur to you to tell me you knew I was looking for somebody who could finger you? But Barney, that's crazy, Mike. Barney's been with me for over four years. If he was going to put a shake on, why wait? Besides, Barney might crack my safe, but it would never occur to him to blackmail well, me. Maybe not blackmail, but he's got a very big mouth. Barney, he's closer mouth than a clam. Well, he told Hal Tilden. How do we know who else? I well, never thought of that. You know, it's about time we all let our hair down around here before somebody else gets hurt. Let's go talk to Sharon. Come on. Come in. Bob, I'm glad you're here. I, I want you to back me up on this. I, I've just told Eddie that I want the show to go on this afternoon. He doesn't agree with me. You're the boss of the pitch, Sharon. Whatever you say goes. Okay, the show goes on. Boy, oh boy, I wonder if he thinks I have any feelings at all. But it's just that I... I think Hal would want it this way. 
He'd be proud of you, Sharon. Do you feel up to talking things over with Mike? He has some ideas. Ideas? <clears throat> yeah, uh... Sharon, did your husband ever mention to you that, that Barney the Roster Ballard is an ex-con? No, is he? Yeah. Yes, he is. I don't see what that has to do with it. But Mike doesn't think that Hal's death was an accident. Oh, you're wrong, Mike. It was. It, it just had to be. Well, that's what the local police think, and I'll go along with them until I can prove otherwise. No, I think it would be better for everybody if we just paid off. Pop, all you're doing is buying a monkey on your back, and you'd be surprised how big it gets and how heavy it grows. It doesn't matter. We have no choice. Of course you have a choice. Hal is dead. I'm sorry, Mike, but look, we, we tried to fight. It didn't work. All right, we'll buy our piece. They say the show must go on. Nobody ever gave me a good reason why it should, but it does. Linda had apparently recovered enough from her shock to take her place in the line. Uh, Linda, honey, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. Okay. Sit down. I'd like to ask a few questions. I've already told the police everything I know. I walked in and saw them laying there. It's horrible. But that's all there was to it. Mm-hmm. Well, what were you doing in the maintenance tent in the first place? I was going to meet... You the right to go around asking me questions. No, 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 no let me right, go. Just a second, right? Yeah. Now, look, you had a reason for going to that tent. Now, what was it? Mr. White, pick on me. I just happened you to You were going to meet somebody in there, weren't you? No. You were going to meet Eddie Merton in there, weren't you? Now, don't lie to me, Linda. Eddie's been ducking me lately. I've been trying to get him alone long enough to find out why. Yeah, what about today? I thought I saw him go into the tent. I, I heard the keg crash and I ran in. I thought it was him. What made you think it was Eddie in there? I said, what made you think it was Eddie? Well, we always used to meet there. Nobody ever uses the tent except the roustabouts, and they're mostly busy that time of day. It was Hal Tilden I saw. What makes you so sure it was Hal Tilden? Because Eddie was busy with Mrs. Tilden working on the new costumes when they heard me scream. There was nothing more she could tell me, but nothing she had told me gave me any reason to believe I was off base. Pop, your troubles are over. You don't have to pay off. What do you mean? Barney's your boy, and I just chased him off the compound. Told him if he ever came back, we'd go to the police. Barney? Well, I sure had him figured wrong. You know, Pop, sometimes you think you know a guy. And then something happens, and you don't know him at all. Mike? Then you don't think Hal was murdered? No. No, it was an accident. Thank heavens for that. Mm. But couldn't Barney still give us trouble? I mean, couldn't he still turn Pop in? Oh, yeah, he probably could, but I don't think he will. I told him if he ever gave us any more problems, I'd track him down, I'd find him no matter where he was. <laughs> I think I scared him off. Pop was a little apprehensive that by chasing Barney off the grounds, we might have aggravated the situation. But I assured him the chances of hearing from the ex-con were fairly remote. There wasn't much more I could do, so I told him I'd be shoving off in the morning. Three days. I figured if the shake artists were going to move, they'd move fast. I'd expected an SOS from Pop by now. If it didn't arrive by the next day... Uh-huh, this was it. They'd heard from the blackmailer again. This time he wanted action, and Pop wanted me to know he was set to buy his piece. Though he tried to discourage me, I told him I was heading for his park immediately, and not to do anything until I got there. Come on in. Pop, what's going on? You're wasting your time, Mike. The payoff's tonight. Tonight? Yep, it's all there. $50,000. You're throwing the money away. Well, maybe. There's nothing I can say. There you won't listen. There's nothing you can say that's going to make us change our minds. But there is something you can do for me. Now, yeah, what's that? Well, it looks like I've got to make the payoff, and I'd feel a lot better if you were alone. No, Sharon, I don't oh, think it would be please. a good idea. Pop, look, we'll follow instructions. It's just as I say, I, I'd like Mike to be there. Well, all right, Mike, if you do go, no funny business. I don't want Sharon getting hurt. Please. Well, all right, no funny business. Where and when do we make the delivery? We're getting our instructions by phone. You'll just have to wait. Take good care of her, will you? Mike, I'd expect you to hear before this. 
You don't think that maybe they give it up? Yeah. Not a chance. Not when they're this close to this. Yeah, but Mike, supposing they. That must be them. You better answer. Yeah. No, it was muffled like there was a, a handkerchief or something over the mouthpiece. All right, where do we go? Well, we go to the Wilson Farm at the end of the Clayton Road. Leave it on the porch and then drive away. Okay, let's get it over with. Just an arm run along. You've had a busy day. I guess we won't be seeing very much of you from now on. No, I'll pull out tomorrow. You know, we haven't shown it much, but we do appreciate all you've done for us. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yes. Merton, what on earth are you calling me for at this hour? Oh, I see. Yes. Fine. That uh, was my barker. Apparently the new hula costumes are ready. He saw the lights on over here and wants to know if I'll come over and check them. Want to come with me? Well, personally, I like to see him well filled, but, uh, yeah, I got a good memory. Let's go. After you, lady? Tell it to me again, Eddie. Like I said, no money. Just a prick. Okay, Mr. Hammer, joke's over. Where is it? Hey, don't ask me. You were with me. You saw me make the payoff. Ask him. Mm -mm. You must have pulled a switch. Me? How could I? Oh, but he could have. Oh, Sheriff, sure, honey, your boy's holding out on you. Ah, don't listen to him. Well, what's the matter, Eddie? You prefer Linda to Sharon, even with the carny practically in her pocket? You're stupid. Shut up. Why, sure, that's what you want, a stake. You and Linda. Yeah, but you never figured that, did you, honey? That after he got the money, he wouldn't need you. Eddie. Eddie. Just a neat little hole through the shoulder. I had an idea that when the police went to work on these two, they'd be singing like a couple of stage-struck canaries. The next morning, I returned the money to Pop. It was pretty clear that the whole idea for the shakedown came to Sharon when Hal had innocently told her that Barney recognized Pop as a former classmate in Sing Sing. Why, why, why? What's with Sharon? If it was money she wanted, I'd have given it to her. As you became infatuated, Pop, she wanted Eddie, and Eddie wanted the show. Poor hell, he stood in the way, so he had to go. Mm. And Barney, we chased him away, and he had nothing to do with it. Don't worry about Barney, Pop. I wanted him out of the way so I could get things moving. He'll be back. Hi. Huh? What are you going to do now? Well, I was thinking of settling down with the show. You? I never pegged you for a carny, man. I sure am. Pop, I got my job all picked out. I'm going to take over the girly show now that Sharon's retired. Ah. 